I'm Mike Klein. I'm the Director of Support and Systems Engineering at ThingMagic, and I'm going to take you through some of our test systems. So this is an example of a use case specific environment we've set up to better assist customers create solutions. In this case, in-vehicle asset tracking. One of the typical challenges that customers face when trying to create in-vehicle asset tracking solutions is they often have to work within an existing environment and the end user doesn't necessarily want to change the shelves and the cabinets that they're currently using. And those items are often made of metal and can present fairly significant RF challenges. One of the things having this type of use case specific setup allows us to do is to fully characterize the RF behavior in order to optimize antenna placement and to determine the best tags to use and the best tag location for the assets being tracked. Another benefit that we can get out of this type of setup is to be able to experiment with configuration changes. For example, removing existing cabinets and shelving, and then demonstrating the benefits that can be gained if the customer moves to RF neutral materials, such as plastic shelving. So using an environment such as this allows us to work with our partners who are developing in-vehicle asset tracking solutions and help them to optimize their solution using ThingMagic readers for a specific use case. So this is a look at an item from our ThingMagic Museum. This is our range tester, originally developed to test the read range consistency across firmware releases and products. It was built by our engineers back in the early days when we had no money. As you can see, it's built from a garage door opener, climbing rope, a wooden track, and can be computer controlled to automate testing. When it was first built, it was geared towards testing the maximum range and seeing when tags would drop off, so we needed about seven to 10 feet. It was expanded over time as tags and reader technology improved and now reads out to about 30 feet. Since then, we've moved on to more industrial strength equipment, allowing us to use a read range for additional use cases, including very large and very heavy pallets that we can then move up and down the range, testing the performance of our readers for specific use cases. This is our anechoic chamber. It plays a major role in product development. All the RF testing and tuning occurs in here. It also plays a significant role in helping partners solve complex RF problems. Inside the chamber, you can see a circular device, which is a gimbal that allows you to rotate an object in 360 degrees on the X and Y axis. It's all made of wood, so we eliminate much of the RF interference that a metal device would cause. This is another one of those Thing Magic Museum items that was developed and created by hand in the early days, but is still in constant use today. This setup allows us to test assets and the tags and tag placement on them in order to optimize the position of tags for a specific object, enabling better accuracy and better performance in the field. This test setup was built as a result of an interesting problem we faced trying to test a specific customer use case. We had a customer who was using our M6 reader for high-speed tolling applications. The problem is, in order to test and tune the solution, we needed to simulate tags passing the antenna at very high speeds, which is very difficult to do in a lab and we don't have racetracks. So our engineers came up with a clever solution to that problem by putting RFID tags inside plastic golf balls and shooting them out of an air gun at high speeds. As you can see, we're able to get to speeds over 100 miles an hour, or about 150 feet per second. As a result of this test setup, we were able to tune the application, and in those scenarios, we were able to read between five to 10 times a single tag on a reliable basis. And this is another example of how creating unique testing solutions enable us to better assist our partners and customers in solving complex RFID problems. So this is an example of a traditional portal setup. As you can see, it has fixtures containing an M6 on either side of the doorway, each with two antennas and a light stack. Additionally, there's an overhead reader which has an M6 connected to two antennas. And this setup allows us to test a variety of more traditional use cases, including assets or pallets of assets going through doors, personal management, and a number of others.